Hello, this is Katina with Blessings and Breakthroughs. Recently, I was talking to a friend. She was very upset because she has been going through some health problems. And she has been going through this, these health problems for the last few months. And she was not expecting it to last as long as it has been. And uh, it has been causing her a lot of pain. And she's a Christian. So she started to question God, uh, and she asked, one of the questions um, she asked God was, why me? God, why me? Why you let this happen to me? And when she told me that I realized a mistake that she was making, that she had in her thinking, see, we have to understand, we are not entitled to anything. The word of God let us know that we all have sinned and come short of his glory. None of us are worthy of the blessings that he bestowed upon us, the blessing that he gives us. None of us did work to earn our salvation. That's why the word of God let us know that none of us should boast. None of us should brag because we were not saved by our work. We were saved by his grace, his mercy, his love. We are not entitled to certain things if we receive those things it's a blessing if we receive a, a, a good health it's a blessing if we receive the money we need to pay our bills and to enjoy the fruit of our labor and to take care of our loved ones uh, and ourselves it's a blessing if we are in our right mind uh, uh if we uh it's a blessing it's not an entitlement the word of god let us know how things work in this world he let us know that it's going to, uh, the sun is going to shine on the just and the unjust. It's going to rain on the just and the unjust. We all, every human being going to, we all are going to have pain and suffering and times of joy and happiness in this world, on this earth. That's just what to be expected. And that's not to say whatever comes your way to just, if you're going through a storm or some hard times, to just accept it. No, that's not what that's that's not what I'm saying. Of course, you go to God in prayer and you pray about it and you ask God to help you and, and you just you stand on his word and you quote those scriptures, believe him at, at his word when he says, I know the plans I have for you to prosper you in the in, and for you to be in good health and for your soul to prosper. And you stand on those words and you say those things, you declare those things, and, and you believe him for those things. But if you are going through a storm and some, uh, whether that storm deal with your finances or whether that storm deal with your marriage or whether it deals deal with your kids or your health, you still believe that God is a good God. You still stand on his word and believe that he is a good father. He is a good provider. He is a good protector. He is a good healer. He's everything that he said he is. Our situation doesn't determine whether he is a good God or not. He already explained to us what life is going to be like in this world. So we should not be surprised when we are going through pain and suffering, when we are uh, going through bad times. And when we are going through those bad times, uh, our, our attitude makes a difference. Our mindset makes a difference. We can't be, we can't have the mindset, God, why me? Why are you letting this happen to me? Uh, I'm a Christian. I'm, you, 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 we cannot have that mindset. We have to, it's, it's, if we was to have that mindset, it's like the uh, parable that speaks in the Bible where the guy who hired the, uh, 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 was hiring the people. And in this situation, the the uh, man went out and picked up work, people looking for work. And he uh, before he took uh, any of them to back to his farm, he let them know, okay, for the, today's pay, you're going to get $25. And $25 was a reasonable, you know, reasonable pay, good pay uh, for uh, during that time the, for the cost of living and, and the time time that they were living in. So it was good pay. And they agreed. So they got on, they got aboard and, and, and went along. And uh, some of them, at the end of the day, some of them worked uh, eight hours and got their $25 pay. And then, the, but during that time in the day, the, the high man realized, realized, you know what, I got room for more workers and I need more workers. I really want to get this done today. So he went out 
uh, uh, a couple hours after the first set of people, he hired and uh, hired some more. And he told them the same thing. Your, your pay is going to be $25, $25 for, the, for the day. And they agreed to it. And then uh, 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 in the middle of the day, he realized he could take more workers and he hired some more. And even at the last, he's realized, oh, we need a couple more, a few more workers in order for us to finish this field like I want us to today. So he went and hired someone else and they just worked for one hour. And they got the, the same $25. So you got some who worked eight hours, got $25. Some who worked six, some and got $25. Some who worked four, and got $25. One, some who worked one hour, and got $25. And they were content. Everybody was content with their $25 pay until they realized that the some who worked less than them received the same pay. They were no longer content. See, and, and the word of God used a parable to let us know that that type of thinking is wrong. They were satisfied with their pay until they found out, found out that they, until they thought and saw when they thought in their mind, wait a minute, he got a better deal than I did because I had to go, I had to slave through this labor for eight hours. He slaved for one hour. He got the same pay I did. That's not the right mentality for us to have. It's just like when Jesus died on the cross and that thief who asked him for forgiveness, who asked him to, who asked God to, who asked God to remember him. He asked Jesus to remember me when you make it to the kingdom of heaven. He showed repentance through his, the statement he made and through uh, 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 what he said, he showed repentance. And Jesus, and he, even though he, most likely he lived, a, he did, he was a sinner. He lived a life of sin. It was his last hour, right before he died, he made it to heaven. Even though he did people, most likely he did people wrong, he hurt people, he, he, he stole from people, he, he, he caused pain and suffering uh, upon other people. He did not live a good life. Yet, he's in heaven right now, having eternal joy, peace, and happiness. Just like someone who's a Christian. And uh, who, whether if that person's a Christian and that person has been saved, gave their life to Christ uh, uh, as a young child, or uh, was born into a family with it, you uh, uh, have a Christian family, a generation, generation of Christians, and, and uh, had a Christian upbringing and gave his or her life to Christ as well. And, and, and so, uh, and died at, let's say, 75 years old, and he got uh, uh, 75 years of experience of uh, Christianity, and, and, and the majority of their life, uh, she, she gave her life to Christ and it was walked in it for 75 years. And you got somebody who walked in it for, uh, as a Christian for uh, uh, two years, some five years. Some may have, I know one uh, of a testimony of a, uh, 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 of a family member who, who gave his life to Christ a few hours. No, it wasn't even, it wasn't even a few hours, maybe one hour or so before he passed away. His sister had been witness to him for years, and uh, and he had lived a, a life, a, a rough life, a tough life, where he did a lot of bad things. He he did, did hurt a lot of people. He did hurt a lot of people, but she, God wanted his heart for him. God wanted his soul not to go to hell. So he sent his sister as well as other people to plant right the seeds of his life. And his sister witnessed to him. And just before he died, his sister, sister came and witnessed to him again. And she asked him again, do you want to give your life to Jesus Christ? With tears in his eyes and tears rolling down his face, he said, yes. He gave his life to Christ right before he died. Within an hour or less of him giving his life to Christ, he passed away through, through problems with his heart. He died. Right now, there's no doubt in my mind, he's in heaven. With eternal peace, joy, happiness. He's in heaven, even though he only just, he just has given it, just gave his life to Christ just in time. It was enough. He's in heaven. He's a, he, he died as a Christian. And he's in heaven and joined himself. So whether you have been, whether it's, you are someone you uh, uh, you know have been a Christian and living that life of Christ and, and and dedicate that life to Christ, whether it's fifty years or whether it's one hour or whether it's even ten or fifteen minutes, that same person go to the same heaven because that same person chose Jesus Christ as his or her Lord and Savior. 
that's how it works. So we can't look at and question ourselves and things like, why me, God? Why are you letting this happen to me? I don't deserve it. Yes, we do. Jesus said we all have sinned and come short of his glory. We deserve it. The, 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 the pain and suffering and things that comes our way that's not good. We're not worthy. We're not worthy of his love. We're not worthy of his goodness. When we think we're worthy, we're struggling with pride. We can't, pride is a sin. We can't have pride. We have to go before him humbly. We got to humble ourselves. Like, God, I know I'm not worthy of your love. I know I'm not worthy of your goodness. Well, please, Lord Jesus, will you show mercy upon me? Will you show grace upon me, Lord Jesus? You said, Jesus, your words, you give me the grace and mercy every day, every day. Lord Jesus, I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you. Show me this mercy. Show me this love. Touch and heal my body. Forgive me of my sin, Lord God. You said, Jesus, in your word, and we confess our sins. You're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord God, I confess I have sinned. I have pride in my heart. I have anger in my heart. I have bitterness. I have hatred. Whatever sin you know you're guilty of, something sins you are guilty of, you're not even aware of, you confess them. Lord Jesus, I confess I have sinned. Forgive me of those sins I have done knowingly as well as unknowingly, Lord God. Forgive me of those sins I inherited from my forefathers, Lord God. Forgive me, Lord God. I have sinned and come short of your glory. I'm sorry, Lord God. I'm sorry. Show me mercy. Show me mercy. Show me mercy, Lord God. Take away this sickness from me, Lord Jesus. You said, Jesus, by your stripes, I'm healed. Heal me, Lord Jesus. Heal me, Lord Jesus. Show me your mercy. Show me your mercy. Forgive me, Lord God. That's the attitude we should come with. A one of humbleness. A one of a, a one realize that we don't deserve his goodness. We don't deserve his goodness. God love. God is the one who loves us. He loves us. He told us, he said, I love you first. He said, God said, I died for you while you was yet sinners. Not when you was perfect and did everything right. It's impossible for us to be perfect. We reach our righteousness to Jesus Christ. That's how we get perfection. It's when we confess our sins and we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We use his blood. That's when we use confess our sins and we use his blood to cover us. That's where our righteousness comes from, uh, where our righteousness comes from. We, we are redeemed by the blood of the lamb. Jesus became the sacrificial lamb of God for us. That's where our righteousness comes from. But some of us, we're sinning right now. We're, we are living a life of sin. We're in sin and we haven't repented of those things. And I'm telling you, repent. Repentance is very important. Confess your sins. Repent of them. I do it every day. Sins I'm, that I, I, I'm aware of that I've done, whether it's anger, or being angry or being offended, or sins I'm not even aware I did. I, I confess my sins every day, more than once a day, because I'm not aware of some sins I may have done. Some, sin, some things I can just be around, and just by being in the, the atmosphere of of the sinful behavior, whether it's somebody gossiping or complaining, I confess it. I want to I, I want to make sure I confess my sins and repent of my sins and cover myself with the blood of Jesus. Because God says, if we confess our sins, if we confess our sins, repent of our sins, then he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Some pain and suffering that you are going through deals with your sin that you have not Confess that you have not repented of. So if you are going through some unnecessary pain and suffering right now, confess, start by confessing your sin. Confess, repent, cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Look up those blood of Jesus verses, Bible verses, and say them. Say those Bible verses on the blood of Jesus. Then you can go humbly before your God, humbly before our Father, and ask him to heal you. You can ask him for whatever you need. God is a good God. He's a faithful God. Don't ever think otherwise. Because he is. God bless you.
To learn more, visit my website, www.blessingsandbreakthroughs.com.